Hi, I'm James, this is Malt and Make, and today we're going to make a brass and walnut cheese board. So, there's a couple of different ways you can make a cheese board. Essentially it's quite simple, it's just a piece of wood, a piece of stone, something that you like the look of, that isn't going to absorb too much of the cheese, and it's going to look pretty on the table. So, here's my guide to a couple of different styles. Modern, mid-century modern, diet, and rustic. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of wood here, but I want to get something else, I think. So I'm just going to go downstairs. Oh, I'm kidding, there's nothing down here. Oh, I'll wait for it. Uh, it's easier to take the lift back up, and this is what I got. Uh, actually, it's not, it's that piece right on top there, but it wouldn't be funny if I just used that one. That probably wasn't funny anyway. There's a few things that tell me this is ash. The bark, the grain structure, and of course, the fact it has the word ash written on the top. This is far too big to use as a cheese board. So rather than having to order cheese by the ton for the rest of my life, I put it on the sliding table of my table saw and cut it down to a more reasonable size. Don't forget something to look after your eyes, ears, and lungs though. Moving over to the mitre saw, it's time to cut things down. And I understand not everyone has a saw like this. You could do it by hand, or I've given you a couple of other helpful suggestions of how you could do it without a saw. Some metalworking equipment can actually be used to cut wood. Or if you're lucky enough to have a welder that has a wood cutting function, then you could use that as well. Alternatively, make a few hundred thousand marks in it with a knife. After that, I use my planer thicknesser to make the faces parallel and smooth. So, I finally cut this down to rough dimensions. Still needs a bit of a tidy up. And what I originally wanted to do was to cut this in half and then use domino joints to stick the two parts together. In what's called a book match. Now, I don't think I've got enough thickness here. You can see it's pretty thin, actually. Well, especially once it's going to be cut in half. But I've got a band saw blade that I've just put on and I really want to try this technique. So let's go and give it a go anyway. If it doesn't work, we can try something else. Right, so it's time to cut this thing down. This way on the band saw, let's see what happens. So, it didn't go perfectly as planned. I had a couple of issues with the guides interfering. That's entirely my fault. Make sure you set up your machine properly before you make a cut. But in the end, it came out pretty well. So, let's go and have a look and see what happens when we fold this open. Well, it looks pretty, but it's not going to work. It's just way too thin. So, new bit of wood. Let's try again. So looking through my pile of stuff, I've got this, uh, well, it's not popular, but it is very popular. I've got this American black walnut, and everyone lo loves this at the moment, so I'm going to use a section of this, cut it down, and I'm going to fast forward back to the same point we would have been at before. So we're back to the stage where I last left you. I've cut this walnut in half, I've got the book match, it's not quite as dramatic as the ash, but it still looks great. Next step, I'm going to try and stick these two together and to help me do that, more to get the alignment rather than strength, I'm going to use some domino joints. Let's go. Alternatively, you could use biscuit joints or dowels or you could just stick the two together, making sure they're kept in alignment. If you are using dominoes, make sure they're properly seated and to do that, I use Thor. Of course, you can use anything from any type of mythology you like, for example, Greek or Roman. At the end, I'm just using a bit of sawdust here because there's a little bit of a gap. You can see I just mix it with a bit of glue and push it in. So I've let the board dry in the clamps for about two hours and I've taken it out and given it a quick sand. What I want to do is add some brass accent pieces. I think walnut and brass are really, really good together. And it seems that everyone else on YouTube does as well, so clickbait. What I want to do is add a small recess here for your thumb just to make it a bit easier to pick up but rather than using just a, a ring I'm going to make some out of this brass hex stock. It's the only thing I've got big enough that uh, I can drill through and be able to still fit my thumb in. Now I've already turned down an end here just so I can grip it more easily in the lathe and I've got just enough cut off so that if I turn the rest put a hole through the middle I should have the perfect size. It makes a lot more sense to just buy something online as this takes quite a bit of work. What I did was face off the front of the part before turning the outside smooth. Next I used a series of drill bits 
to make a hole big enough to use a boring bar to bring the part to its final dimensions. I used a forstner bit to cut the hole in the wood because it leaves really nice clean sides. While I have designed this as an interference fit, I used a tiny bit of glue in the end just because the wood will change shape during the seasons and I wouldn't want that brass to fall out of there. So I've got to a point where I'm not quite sure what to do. I could leave the board looking just as it is, which I think looks very good, but equally, I could put some extra accent pieces in. Now, I've got some brass that is the same size as my bandsaw blade, and what I have planned to do is put some little slots in here to put some brass in. Now, against this yellow wood, it doesn't look very striking, but I think in the walnut, it'll look great. The thing is, I don't know if it's gonna make it look any better, but it's an experiment. Let's go ahead and try. I kept the fence in the same position for all of these cuts so they'd be an even distance away from the edges. It would be better to have a block behind the board so that all the depths of cut would be the same, but for me that would have got in the way of filming. These bits of brass actually came from the scrap bin of my local metal stockist. It's always worth going to visit, they might even cut it to the right size for you. If you don't have a shear, a dremel or a cut off wheel on a grinder would work just as well. I intentionally left the pieces a little bit long so that I could use a grinding attachment on my dremel and then a sanding pad to get everything smooth and flush. I'm covering this in Osmo Top Oil, which is a food safe finish. They recommend going to 150 grit, but to get the right finish on the brass, I'd had to take this all the way up to 2000. It's probably why it doesn't look quite as dramatic as I'd hoped, but it's gonna protect the wood well. This is a really fun little one day build, and I really hope you give it a go. In the meantime, why not check out one of my older videos? And don't forget to follow me on Instagram to keep up with all of the latest ideas that I'm working on. I'll see you next time.